scale of one through five, like agree to strongly disagree, you know, that kind of thing. Like uh, how much value do you place on there being uh, farmland in town? Historical like, the historic, yeah, yeah, so many different. Um, I have the open-ended questions right here. The actual, all of the questions are at the town hall <coughs> for the previous survey. Yeah. Which, uh, are those questions going to change from the new survey? That was 1980s, and this is 2020. Right. I mean, we so could. I, it would. It would be a combination of reusing and then brainstorming ones. And honestly, it might be nice to whittle it down so it's not complicated. The simpler it is, the more people are going to participate. That's for sure. Um, probably want to ask the moderator if it's legal to. to That's a great point. Yeah. Um, yeah. If it's not. Um, then we may just need to uh, ask the legislative body for money to send out a mail. Exactly. No, precisely. Um, the last surveys were being delivered, I think, according to what I saw. Yeah. I mean, Grafton's population was a little less than half of what it is now yeah. then, so it might be, be hard to a challenge. Yeah. Um, What, what was the approval process for the last one? Was uh, that the board on it? No, no. So the board, the planning board can approve it as a representative democracy. Like, uh, you need to have a public hearing, but you, the, the master plan doesn't go to town meeting. It just goes to the planning board. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's our goal to include the public and also exercise some discretion as being elected representatives in, in terms of what's appropriate. Some, some. So, like, could we submit some of our own survey submissions for, for you know, the release of this survey? Can I suggest that we focus for public comment at the end so we can get through what we're doing? Sure. Yeah. No, that, that, that's fine. Let, let me let me answer your question mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll continue. Um. um I, I think that uh, I, I think that the the basic um, the, the idea is that if, if I'm going to like say it in a very like harsh way, the planning board is obligated to hear what the public has to say, but not obligated to incorporate it into. That, that, do you see what I'm saying? It's yeah. Like, it, like, I, like it, I don't think we want to do that necessarily, but like it's yeah, represent, right? You know. Totally. Um, I, I think the idea is that we that, that the board is obligated to listen to what people have to say, and would be advised to use their judgment on whether what's being said is perceived to be like best or overall like kind of the majority opinion, um, but. I think at the end of the day, it's the board's discretion what to vote for. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, uh, you know, there could be 100 people at the public hearing, and you know, they could all say we don't want this, and the board could, in theory, listen to what they had to say and go completely opposite from what they had to say. And if they didn't like it, they would be advised to present um, members to be elected to replace the planning board over the years. That's the Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, but thank is, you. Isn't this board kind of committed to just writing a plan that meets the basic requirements? Like, we're not going to ask if you want a public pool, and if 100 residents say they want a public pool, but that's just not my goal. I mean, my goal is no. a narrow picture of sure. what we need to do. So, master plan is also not enforceable. So. Right. Um, I mean, I think that the very nature of this whole thing is that we have to be okay with the public not necessarily wanting what we think they want and being willing to present that 
to a certain extent anyhow. Like that's the purpose of a survey. Like, um, like I, I think the uh, mission statement, a set of mission statements that we write as a board can be like a, a concoction of the values that we know we ought to include, but also, you know, I, I, the, I don't think we should um, belittle the fact that we shall inform the general public and we shall solicit public comments. Um, I think a, a survey could be that we sent could be way simpler than the one we see in 1987. So if our if our goal is to have some kind of survey available early spring next year, yeah, and um, are we we're just talking about a lot of legwork by the people sitting here, or will there be expenses? Do we have I, money in the budget for it? Right, we have a small amount. Um, we probably have enough money in the budget to send out one town like town, one town like mailer. Um, if we felt like we needed to send more than that, we could consider upping the budget a little bit to cover that next year. Um, Are we considering doing that? I think the people did that wrote the original one, hiring consultants to write the survey, uh, hiring consultants to write the plan? I, I, okay. I get the impression that if we hire anybody to do this, we're going to have a 180 page mm -hmm. master plan. I don't know how to fix that. I don't know if I'm wrong, but I get the impression that if we want a nine page master plan, we kind of need to whittle it down, choose like a dozen survey questions, very basic, like strongly disagree through to strongly dis to strongly agree, like I want Grafton to be rural, I want Grafton to have farmland, I want Grafton to have public transportation, I want, and, and like whatever the results are, that's what's presented as the answer to that survey, and that's just like, you know, a dozen questions that we can decide, and then the rest would just be simply us coming up with a mission statement. Um, and it might be wise to get the results of that survey before we decide what our mission statement's going to be, because we may need to incorporate the results into that. Well, that's exactly what the mission statement would be, a combination of those results. Right. Um, I, honestly, I don't have a problem with the master plan being three pages. I don't... Yeah, I don't think it needs to be long. Vision, land use. Um, <laughs> um, so, so what's the first step? I think the first you step. Want to come up with some. Have somebody come up with some questions. I think we can to the next meeting. Yeah, let's. Uh, or do we want to look at the previous survey to see what's appropriate for use this time and come up with more questions? We could actually. Coming up with the questions could be just bringing the previous survey next. Absolutely. I, 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 and using it as a, a effective brainstorm in front of us to like knock off some or augment a different one. So like, yeah, let's look at the let's look at the survey questions from the master plan. Also finding out the legality from the moderator and whether or not we can put the survey to to voters, and that will tell you whether or not you have to add money to your budget this year. Right. Um. <clears throat> yep. A complete statistical report of the survey indicating the responses to each question is on file at the town office and at the library. Get a copy of that and make some copies. That was true in March 1986. <laughs> but well, she's still there. Yeah, right. Let's, let's leave it at that for the master plan for now. Um, what I wanted to bring up, you had, uh, Russell, you had talked about the capital improvement program. I did. And uh, we, at the next RSA in this book, um, I'm, I'm a little bit confused, to be perfectly honest. Um, 
we, because we have a planning board and because we have a master plan, we therefore happen to be able to have a capital improvements program, right. which we do, right? For like all sorts of other things. What do you mean? It, 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 um, uh, like all, all, uh, fire department and uh, so what it, how it works now is every individual department of uh, the department head has money saved um, or they ask say the legislative body for a certain amount of money every year yeah the problem with it the reason why I think CIP is important is because I'll give you a good example. I was the police chief. I was fairly well liked and I got whatever I wanted. That's not fair to say another department who just doesn't, they have a good department head but they're just not a popular person. They still have a job to do. They still need a truck or they still need this or that. So it's just it doesn't really work that well. If there was a plan implemented um, that, in my opinion, should circulate around the time that budgets go, so that feedback could come back to us, and we can write up a plan based on the knowledge from the department heads, then they don't. I mean, you don't have to follow the plan verbatim. Yeah. But the idea is to make things a little more fair. Um, instead of, say, the roads getting to the point where you can't drive on them, but yet we've got two brand new police cruisers. I mean, that's just not good for the people. So a plan would say, hey, look, every six years, the police department gets a car. Every five years, the highway gets a new truck. Mm -hmm. Every 23 years, the town gets a new ambulance. Something like that needs to, there needs to be a plan that department heads will follow and they'll have some kind of respect for it. Now, there are some time, you know, some cases where, hey, the engine and the cruiser is bad, it, it really it's cost way more than what it's worth to fix it, so you throw that in for the next year's budget instead of that other one that's working just fine and we get another year out of it. There's, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's just not, it's not fair to the people that they have some departments excelling and other departments that are not. Um, I mean more like a general fund? But well, what it is is it, it's kind of a plan for the way the town spends their revolving funds and things like that. Inst instead of uh, an annual vote on Well, there's, who gets there's what? still an annual vote. Yeah. There's still an annual vote, and the department heads will still get money to do whatever. But you can, if you have that plan, the people can go by that plan and say the planning board says that this is best case scenario because they've looked at all the departments and say that, you, you know, they feel that this is what works best for the people. Instead of, hey, Russ is cool over there at the police department, let's throw him some money. So what I'm gathering is that when we look at the warrant each year, we see, shall you approve a certain amount for X capital reserve fund? Um, the capital improvements program would be a way for the planning board to even those bumps out, correct, and and uh, have a longer range of fund designation. So that is my take on it. Do okay. I think that Grafton has the capability of having like one fund and that the like a CIP fund instead of, and then they divvy out the money to certain departments on, I mean that really in my mind makes more sense, but I don't know the legalities behind that, I'd have to do more research. Right. Um, so the capital improvements program 
basically has very little to do with how much money the planning board itself has. Right. That, that was like a conceptual hitch that I was struggling to overcome. So th th this is the planning board's oversight of other departments which need, uh, which in uh, hypothetically would want a regular stream of money mm -hmm. to make sure that they didn't encounter. Right, we prioritize yeah. um, the, the spending of the big expenses. Mm -hmm. And we put it down and we say, look, here's the priority. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there are, you can go out three, five years, mm -hmm. seven years. That would be like the norm. Yeah. Um, the, but for big expenditures for the town of Grafton, mm -hmm. for example, um, our town office, that's a huge expense. Mm -hmm. And it's not a nice building. You know, there it, it probably ought to be <coughs> in the plan, maybe on the you know, even if it's the twenty year mark, uh, people should know that hey, there is an ex possibly an expense in twenty years. Maybe we should do some work to it now, or maybe we should plan on having a capital reserve to start saving some money for that. Right. So what we have going on now is we have, say, a person in town acknowledging that the building is not all that wonderful. So they put a warrant article on, whether it's by petition or by selectman. Yeah. And then the people don't quite understand it. There is no plan to look at. Um, right. So they it gets voted down all the time. But the popular police chief gets his cruiser. Um, is there anyone here who isn't a select board member with bigger fish to fry daily who wants to learn more about what it takes for us to start this? I'd like to hear a little bit more about how it would be. You said the current system is well, it is. I, I think having people, voters have a direct say every March sounds pretty fair to me. So could you explain more about how, I mean. I'll, I'll give you an the, example. For administration, I, I kind of get it. But for mm -hmm. the voters, the people, can you explain as, that? As a selectman, I know that we have some departments that are struggling. And I know we have departments that are flourishing. The people don't necessarily know why that's happening. They just know that they keep giving the police department what they want because it seems to be functioning and doing a good job. There are other departments that don't seem to be doing a good job, but they're trying as hard as they can. The reason why they can't do a good job is because they don't have the stuff that needs to be replaced. Because, and because they're not doing a good job, they never get that stuff because people won't vote for what they want. I think. See what I'm saying? I better services for the... So therefore, in the long run, it's worse off for the voter. Yeah. I feel like it's a pretty common political strategy to do everything you can to make sure somebody you don't like doesn't have the resources to do what they need to, and then point at them and say, look, that person wasn't able to do anything. I, I, I think that you're right with the like public input and the transparency or uh, but I think Russell's right too about um, like if you're not given what you need to succeed you're just going to be running in place and you're never going to look like what's you're popular is not always right I guess is what I'm trying to say I mean it's all about a person being able to vote the way that they want to vote, um, and that's great. But when it comes to certain things, especially essential things for a town, it's the town's departments of this board and selecting to step in and try and fix those things. 
<laughs> try to mediate. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, Thank you. Well, it seems like if we can get a capital improvements program adequately implemented, I mean, maybe, yeah. I, mean, I don't think we need to jump right into it. Yeah. Um, I, I think that we quite possibly could probably have um, like a mock plan. So in other words, I would suggest during this budget, in a lot of other towns, it, it mimics the budgeting process. In other words, you ask for information during the budgeting process because the department heads are at their desk. They know exactly what it costs for certain stuff for the next year. It's not that difficult for them to figure out three years later, mm. um, or even five years later. And while they're sitting there, they can figure that out with probably not much more time. And we don't know the information that they know. So we can't just come up with a plan. We have to ask them for their information. And I think asking, quite possibly asking for the information um, during the budgeting process would be easier for the department heads to, to get back to us. And it, this would be the very first time, so a mock plan, um, we come up with something with the information that we get, and then we take a look at it and share it with the public, um, see what they think, share it with the department heads. It's nice, to be, nice to be able to demonstrate you're not trying to take anyone for a ride, like yeah, without committing to it. I, I have a plan yeah. in my own family. You know, I can tell you what my me, my wife and I want to do 20 years from now. Right. This town doesn't, and yeah. I just I can't fathom that. Well, maybe if the planning board's obligation to run this is, I mean, if the planning board has the, they're the party responsible for implementing this. I mean. Maybe a demonstration of like good faith on the board could be for the planning board itself to have a capital improvement pr program to redo really the master plan every ten years, you know. And, and so like every year there's a hundred extra dollars given to the planning board to go into their capital reserve, and every decade you have a thousand dollars to send out some mailers and maybe right. hire uh, some legal advice or like a hundred dollars. <coughs> Every year is a whole lot easier to swallow than a thousand dollars every right. ten years on the board. And I mean, the planning board's budget is minuscule, mm -hmm. um, and so like if if the planning board is in charge of this and has the authority to do it, but demonstrates that it's not splurging on itself, maybe that would be. A little easier for people to deal with. <laughs> Could our master plan possibly have a line item about creating a capital improvement plan? What do you mean a line item? I don't know, like, you know, there's. In the master plan? plan well, in the mission statement, it could plan. be that part of the goal is to have a capital improvement plan. It probably is. But we can make sure that it still is. And, like, the whittled down version. Well, we can make sure it's still up. You know, there's a hundred things to read. It's like, you can't really take any of them that seriously. Right. There's ten. It's like, right. There's no reason not to put it in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an expectation for future board members to, to know what's going on. Right. Okay. Um, Well, we can, we can, because we have a master plan, you can implement a CIP. You can't, if you don't have a master plan, you can't have a CIP. So, we have a master plan. We're working on the master plan. We do not have a CIP. I think it's, I think it's more important to get feedback from the department heads and go forward with the CIP than I do to go forward with the master plan. However, doing it a little bit at a time like this, I mean, it, it's just, right now it's a perfect opportunity because it's budgeting season. Yep. And I think that that information, if you request that information from the department heads, who I have to say I've already given a heads up way back in March when I was running the 
of selectmen. I said, look, look forward to this when it comes budget season because this is what I'm going to ask for. So they've already got a heads up. They kind of have the basic knowledge of what I'm looking for. Um, it shouldn't be that difficult for them to give us that information. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm reading this a little closer. Mm -hmm. So here, I, I think I have our answer of what we can do right now. In a municipality where the planning board has adopted a master plan, the local, which we have, the local legislative body may authorize, may authorize the planning board to prepare and amend a recommended program of municipal capital improvement projects projected over a period of at least six years. That, I mean, that, to me, that very clearly reads that this needs to be on a warrant. No, we, it's already on. It was on many years ago. It, oh, Permission to do it was on years ago. Does that stay put to the best of it your knowledge? It does until you take it away. Okay. Can Maureen, can we, do you, do you have a sense of what year that occurred? Not at the moment, but I can put my hands on it. If you'd be willing to, that might be helpful rather than pawing through years and years of. Because uh, I'm hearing the same thing you are. So I think the next step really is to produce that. Yeah. Before we waste any more time. Right. We need to make sure that that's solid. Because if it's not, we need to put this on the warrant or else well, we're wasting it. It's already on the warrant. So whatever's on the warrant and and people vote yes on. No, I understand that. But it, until it goes away. Just. Just it, because we haven't done what we should have been doing all okay, this time. Okay, Marie. Um, I believe you. There are a lot of people who say things happen. Oh, I understand. And mm -hmm. we need to have it shown to us before we take it a step further. I'm and sure there's yeah. going to be a rain day between now and next month's Thursday, <laughs> yeah. and I can sit and go from. My guess is it would. Would be 86 until. I, I would guess I would start at the 80s. You think it's that old? Exactly. Right on. Okay. Um, so, um, all right. So we yeah we need to we need to confirm that. Um, and if it's if it's not, we need to put it on the warrant. Or if it's dubious, if people might not like it, we want to put it on the warrant. And it seems like there's an alternative for at town meeting to authorize the select board to appoint a capital improvement committee. Um, that the option is for you guys to do it, and if you're not willing to do it or you can't do it, then the select board can appoint it. Right, but the uh, but depending the on how the warrant article was written. That permission may not have been granted yet. The, to appoint somebody? The, the legislative mm -hmm. body may authorize the planning board or the legislative body may authorize the select board to appoint. Right. And okay. so I don't, we need to find what was voted on is, the, is still the answer. Um, okay. So we have a next step for master plan, which is the level survey. Yeah. We have a next step for capital improvement, which is to find the warrant article authorizing. Sure. And those things are happening concurrently, not one above the other. I guess so. Um, yeah, I don't see why we can't work on that. Um, I think technically, because it's a major subdivision, a like site visit is, I don't know if allowed or expected is the right term. Is it a posted meeting? No, no. Go? I mean, I know I've been there. I've walked it three or four times now because I was interested in property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I don't, I don't think it's like a, Necessarily like a decision-making process. Um, 
No, it just probably familiarizes yourself with, right. you know, it paints a picture of what's going on on that map. You know? Right. Um, I mean, you see a wetland, you don't really know. When you go out there, you'll see there's 30 acres of swamp, you know, so yeah. it, it'll paint a much better picture than what you saw in black and white. Yeah, in and, and many ways, it's just a training opportunity. Um, do you want to schedule something now? I want to, um, we certainly could. I don't know what Anson, I mean, I guess Anson can do. He's, he can do it whenever. Um, why don't I check in with him? And um, I can email everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be. It's a group thing, not individual. I don't know that yet. And um, I think that the subdivision regs may specify that? Do you know any different? What is it? Two, two of you can go without posting it as a meeting. So it still would be a meeting with three of three. you go, then it's considered a meeting. So that's still, that's relevant even if it's like an informational. I'm sorry? I mean, the three of us can go to lunch and you know, it's well, like if we you don't go there, then it needs to be posted if, because it's considered a forum and it's considered a meeting. I guess it, if it is planning board related, that yeah, you know, and it in. is in your rules of procedure. In yeah, your yeah. Red yeah. Red yeah. Red yeah. Red yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah, in that case, we just wouldn't yeah. go. Yeah. <coughs> but two of you can go. We always went and choose. Right, it wouldn't need to be like a public hearing. It would just be a no, regular just, meeting. Just yeah, but then we all have to be able to go and do this property. Stuff too, if it's a public, if it's a public meeting, but we're planning to learn. Right, and I, that's that's a fascinating <laughs> rabbit hole. <laughs> we're going down. No, right, just give me if it's a public meeting, it's a public meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so maybe it makes sense for uh, two people to go. I don't know. You're familiar with the problem. I am. I don't need to go there. You live a half an hour away. <laughs> Sabrina and I live eight minutes away, and we're next door to one. Uh, unless you want to. You can go on your own also. Right. Yeah, you can. But you said it's four. Two people can go without Two posting. people can go without posting right. it as a meeting. Exactly. So one can go, two can go. When it becomes three, then you're in trouble as far as it being considered a meeting. All, all the things that we'll do at Anson's yeah. have to be subdivided properly. And the Anson doesn't have to be there. Right. Well, I mean, it'd be nice for yeah, that to show us. Oh, yeah. I can imagine going on Okay. You just give them a call and say you're going to do it. I see. It's not a big deal. I think it's it's part of the like, major subdivision thing. A uh, minor subdivision, which is like three or fewer lots and like certain road frontages and certain lot sizes, you don't, you're not obligated to allow a site. Really? I don't think so. For a major subdivision, it's expected, I think. What do you know otherwise? Do your homework. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was on the assumption it was expected kind of all the time. Yeah. So wear rubber boots and only bring one friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and do it during duck season. So, Maureen, I've never oh, actually geez. heard of oh, anyone on the planning board going to anybody's property. We always went when it was Gretchen and Peg and Friend and Barty and, yeah, we always went before you got on, always. Yeah. And we did, we, we examined the soil also. It, a, a lot of things got lost with that yeah, board that you were on. Yeah, I think the soil sample maps are from like 30s or 40s, it, you know, not that it right. moves a whole lot. I mean, but it could have been moved. Right, it right. really does. I mean, you, you do logging above it or something and that lot changes. Uh, there are or someone just dates, you know. Yeah. Right, yeah. So mm -hmm. those, those really are the, the, some of the reasons for going there. Yeah. All right, um, I'm kind of satisfied with that. Um, we can be in touch about who wants to visit when and make sure that we don't uh, push any limits. Uh, is there any public comment or questions? What's that say? Yes, regarding the whole road thing, uh, did you ever look into the uh, connection between 
Folks Crossing and uh, Trading Hill? I, I haven't. Yeah. Uh, do you know anything more? Yes, the boulders walking the road. Right, we, 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 we knew that that had occurred. Um, Yeah, so the, what might be considered like the west or north branch of Cherry Hill, um, which is like the left fork, um, goes all the way to the sharp turn of Bullocks, which has called, which has a sign called Farnham Road, um, which had been passable in years past in like a Jeep. Um, and like you were saying, now there's, there's some rocks that somebody moved to block that. Um, right, so I, I, yeah, that, that, that's like relevant to this town map and uh, <coughs> you just have to do some digging on if that road was ever Any, completely I mean, discontinued. I mean, you, 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 anybody yeah. can do the digging. It can be a private individual that goes in and asks for, say, the, the deeds to the surrounding lands to see if it was a gated right away or if it was given back to the property owners or you know. Sarah uh, has a book um, which she's able to produce that has a kind of old but probably mostly accurate list of roads and a current classification. Isn't it the planning board's uh, responsibility to make sure that towns are open, uh, boards are open to the public? Yeah. Um, but we're not going to be able to work on an instant basis. So if, if you want to speed things up, you're welcome to take a look. I'll keep it in my mind to try to figure out, too. Uh, yeah. Regarding, okay. uh, regarding the capital improvements plan, what we'll yeah. uh, Russell was suggesting, the budget already goes to the budget committee and the uh, selectmen. So if it's unfair to the people, and it's up to those committees to, it's not. The, the Warren articles that come to vote are already passed to the budget and so on. Yeah, well, the, so, yes. However, it can change in the process. In other words, if a department head sends it to the selection, the selection can make changes to it. And then if it goes to the budget committee, they can make changes to it. Um, a lot of changes can be made in opposition of the department head, mm -hmm. which doesn't directly reflect the information of the capital improvements plan, which is what the department has has told the, the planning board is best. So you're right, it's it, it quite possibly it's it's a different form of information, but it's information that's coming from directly from the department head. But the since it's not enforceable, aren't the, the budget the budget and the selectmen would just do what they think is best anyway. They do, they, they do, but if they if they have a plan, every, when everybody's on the same plan, it works so much better. I think the idea is that just because um, we, this, it could just be a, a, like a mutual agreement. It doesn't need to be a, a forced thing. The whole idea of planning is to get on the same page and try to work. A good example is body armor needs to be replaced every five years because your sweat glands and all that stuff breaks it down. It's out of warranty after five years. And the selectmen know that you can't have gear that's out of warranty and put a person out there to go to work. The budget committee doesn't know that. The budget committee just yeah. says, wow, $1,200 well, every five years. No way. We'll give you eight. Well, that's not enough to keep that that police officer working in a safe manner where the town's not going to be liable for something that happens. The planning board has, they know the same thing that the selectmen know, but they don't have the overall say on this is what the number is going to look like when it goes to the people to vote on. So it tells the people, hey, the, here's the reason why they need to invest every five years. You see what I'm saying? 
But the budget committee meets with the department heads, and that's the time where you can. Where you oh, can you know, I've, I've seen the department head. I've seen the budget committee meet with department heads, and they tell them what they need, and they they don't provide it. Also, I don't see how the so, Jake, your your questions and your responses are excellent exercise for us to think hard about what we're doing. But at a certain point, it seems like it's just like a little bit. Uh, beating a dead horse. We've definitely heard what you said, and um, I, you know, I, I think that your questions in general are evocative. Um, but we, I mean, I think we have a certain viewpoint here that we're just going to go with. What's up? Um, I uh, had heard that they're going to get rid of the elected position as a police officer in town and switch it to an appointed. Oh, is that part of the new master plan? So the master plan is not a regulatory document. Okay. So there's nothing enforceable about anything written in the master mm -hmm. plan. Um, as far as elected versus appointed police officer, that is something that can only be changed on the town warrant. Okay. And has, it, it, it's very much unrelated to the planning board. Right, I, I'd like to see maybe that on the survey. Uh, because that'd be really important. I think uh, when Russell talks about how the chief is so popular, it's because we elected him. I mean, that's why he's so popular, right? You got in there. But when we start appointing officers, they may not be so popular, but they get to keep their job because they're you guys are appointing them. Well, no, the, you bring up good points, and and you know it's uh, there's pros and cons to all those different things. Mm -hmm. We could definitely I won't I won't make any promises, but we could consider that as a survey component. I like to have, as someone who's the public, uh, and I, hopefully a lot of other people uh, you know, respect this idea, is that we want to uh, choose who's in that position. Um, because sometimes we can't always trust our uh, elected officials in, in this position. Yeah, it's... Uh, as in you guys appointing, I'd rather have that decision. No, I understood. It's... it's a Centuries old uh, debate. Certainly is. <laughs> like, you know, framers all thinking that, all getting all classist, thinking that the common folk are not uh, well informed enough to make decisions about things, and it's kind of crooked seeming, isn't it? Like, uh, anyways, no. Very. No, I, I. No, extremely, actually, I, because yeah. you guys are actually part of the public, too. You're just taking a position right now in this authority to be in that spot, but when you leave, you're the public. Of course. Yeah. So yeah, no, we're all equal. That's I don't I don't think anyone was hoping to suggest otherwise. Okay. What's up, Rich? Did you get an ex officio report? Um, that's a great that's a great question. We can do that in just a sec. Is there any other public comment, Ryan? I had two. I guess this one's for Russell. Russell, you were saying how some of the unpopular department heads are getting what is needed long term. This you know these are my words. Pitching what I think you're saying. Um, I guess my comment is I think that should be the department's head, just head's job is to go out and push and retail politic to the citizens what they need for their department and stuff. I think that's a big part of their job. And as you know, I've heard from what you did as police officer, that was part of your job. So I think that is a part of it. It, it is a big part of a job. It's just some people are better at it than others. Hundred percent. I mean, and. We should get those people. You know, should the people um, have something less than what they're paying for it just because a department head doesn't have the time or can't take the time to go have a coffee with the people on the other side of town and explain everything? Yeah. I hear you. Uh, but my, as my, my comment, I think it's more the planning board is the, the master plan. As Amelia pointed out, um, it's not enforceable. It's an advisory document. You know, these are my words. So to me, having this plan is pretty meaningless. It's all about the conversation you have with the townspeople, the taxpayers, the citizens, right? That's really what this master plan is about. It's having that conversation, having people get on the same page. Now, if that gets codified in three pages or 180 pages, Cool, but it's more about having a conversation to get people on the same page. Well, yeah, that it's not about the document, 
and I have lived in, and I've made this comment before, we lived in a small city before, and that master plan takes a life of its own, and people start saying, well, we can't do this because the master plan doesn't say that, and it's just like, it can be a disaster. We're, so it's yeah. simple and get the conversation going. Uh, motor financial uh, benefit to the town, say grants or anything like that, mm -hmm. by having a master plan. Mm -hmm. So master there's plan. something more to it than just, hey, Grafton wants to go in this direction, let's talk about this. Um, it can be beneficial to the town. There's grants for that. There's grants for the master plan? So, well, some, it's my knowledge that some grants are only available if you have a master plan. Interesting. Which we have. So, which we do have. Right. Yeah. Although, okay. if we applied for a grant, With a certain it might be questionable that our master plan had not been updated in almost 40 years. That's exactly, that's exactly, what, the, exactly <laughs> what the issue is. Right. Uh, I know. Right. Or, or it's like it's still good, but you didn't have to change it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had to put some buddies then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want bridge money for that bridge that, that didn't work out? Um, can we see your master plan? Oh, why is it 40 years out of date? <laughs> you don't qualify for the money. It, it's, there are reasons to, to follow the RSAs and keep it up to date. H have we heard that though, or is that just something that could No, I really have heard. I think yeah. there is a financial benefit to having it. Yeah. There, there are grants. Yeah, is there like a, a date then? Because we were hearing five to ten years, time to time. Like, is there something that to qualify for those grants? We, like I, don't, I don't know. Um, I, I think that um, there's a lot of potential philosophical idealism coming from anyone in this room. And I understand the aversion to like treating the master plan like a special thing, because I often felt that way myself in the past. Um, at this point, I feel like it's clear to me that <clears throat> to all stay on the same page and um, to make sure that public services are appropriate, that it takes a staggering amount of deliberation and what seems to be a waste of time to reach a decent agreement. And I think that's what the master plan is basically trying to accomplish, is that it's it's facilitating discussion, kind of like you said. That's the valuable component of it. Um, but sometimes it seems, I don't know, you see an office full of 100 people, and it doesn't seem like anybody's actually doing anything, but I guess they all need to be doing what they're doing to make the company work. Uh, I didn't say consensus. I said no, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, right on. Um, well, Ryan, we, we appreciate your feedback, I think, and um, we're happy to hear it, uh, public comment and stuff, and, you know. More perspectives, the better, I guess. Um, Russell, ex officio comment. Or was there any other public comment? Lee, you got anything? Right on. Uh, Paul, what's up? Um, considering how important some of this stuff is, uh, I was wondering if maybe agendas for the planning board could be a thing so that you might lure in more sure. public. Sure. Mm -hmm. no, no, no. Typically, um, I mean, you guys have an idea of what you're coming here for this evening, right? I mean, you knew Anson was coming and all that. Right. The public, I mean, it may not be a shell, but if it's a May, it'd be a great May. So are we posting it online? Like, how are we getting yeah. people to see it prior to it? It goes to the website. It could, be, it could go to the town website. That's a reasonable consideration. Um, this is a... I don't know how to attack this one because... Um, I feel like if there are 40 people in, in the room, mm -hmm. they may very well be very informed. It may not be practical to include everyone in, in the discussion at that point. Um, we, we could potentially have a three hour meeting. Um, I think if you were to go to a town that, for better or for worse, had their act together, like Lyme or something, you, make a peep, you're out of there. Like, public comment, like, limited suits and ties, like, intensity. Like, uh, I, I, I don't ever want to be like that. 
Wouldn't, um, wouldn't it theoretically be great if like everyone in town just showed up tonight? I don't think so. And and the, the, the reason is is because the whole idea behind representative democracy is everyone's got a life and if every single person votes on every single thing and every single component, all of our lives are a hundred percent local government. And I don't think most of us want that. No one needs to show up, they just need to sit at their desk. Proof of point how irrelevant it all is. Well, I'd like to know what you're coming to the meeting for. No, no, I, I, Paul, you bring up a good point. I don't know if we're obligated to do that. Um, I, I can try to see if it makes sense. It's also hard to know what we're going to learn last minute about what we should include. Do the other departments do that? Do they yeah, that's a great question. Does anyone else post a agenda? Select me. Okay. All right. Um, you know, sometimes it's pretty important. I remember, I remember when you had uh, a bunch of alternatives uh, show up. I think some are on the board now. Yeah. And I had no idea of that. I, I'm unaware that anyone in the actual public did, and that was one of the best attended meetings ever. How did everyone know? That's very selective. Well, yeah, the the board <coughs> the board chooses alternates. The public does not. No, no. How did the people know to be here for that meeting? I mean, that's all private conversations, private phone mm -hmm. calls. The public was not noticed. Yeah, and it wasn't a meeting.